Hello everyone, it's Red Effect, and today we will be comparing two main battle tanks, Germany's Leopard 2 and Soviet and now Russian T-80 main battle tank. As usual, I won't talk about their history or development, but will rather focus on their statistics and performance. I will compare variations of those two MBTs that came out at similar time, so the comparison would be as fair as possible. First, Let's compare Leopard 2 from 1979 and T-80B from 1978. We will start with firepower. Leopard 2 was armed with the state-of-the-art 120mm L44 gun, which was extremely good for the time it came out, so good that it is still used today. Best armor-piercing fin stabilized discarding saber projectile at the time was the M13, with around 470mm penetration at 2 km, and DM-12A1 high-explosive anti-tank with 600mm penetration. T-80B was armed with 125mm 2A46M gun, which was a modernized variant of D-81T or 2A46 gun. Best armor-piercing thing stabilized discarding saber projectile that T-80B could fire at the time was 3BM-22, also known as Zakolka which has 380mm certified penetration at 2 km. Best high explosive anti-tank projectile was 3BK-18M with 550mm penetration. It would also fire 3OF-26 high explosive fragmentation projectile and added ability to fire Cobra anti-tank guided missile from its main gun which had 600mm penetration. T-80 uses automatic loading system, which gives it rate of fire of around 9 to 10 rounds per minute. Leopard 2 has manual loading system, gun has to be elevated each time it fires, but it's no problem for it since the sight remains on the target. Rate of fire is around 6 to 12 rounds per minute, depending on the loader and the situation. Both tanks had ballistic computers, wind sensors, etc. And they both lack thermal imaging systems. T-80B used active and passive infrared, which means it did not have to illuminate light, but rather used ambient light in order to see in low light conditions. First batch of Leopard 2s were also equipped with passive infrared systems. Now let's look at the protection. Leopard 2 has armor protection of 510mm versus kinetic energy and 810mm against heat on turret front and 500mm against kinetic energy and 700mm against high explosive anti-tank on front hull. 15 out of 42 rounds of ammo are stored in turret bustle, which is protected with blast doors and blowout panels, but the rest, 27 pieces, are stored in forward hull compartment, completely unprotected, right next to the driver. The ATB has 500mm against kinetic energy and 650mm against heat on turret, and 450mm against kinetic energy and 575mm against heat on hull. Unlike Leopard 2, T-80B has no safe ammo rack. Most of ammo is stored in autoloader located at the bottom of the hull under the turret. It also has extra storage for ammo in the turret, but crews are advised not to use it, since it is not protected. And just like it's the case with Leopard 2's ammo in the hull, if struck, ammo in T-80B will also lead to catastrophic explosion. Neither of the tanks have any kind of active protection system. Next up is mobility. Leopard 2 weights 55 tons and has MTU MB873 V12 diesel engine with 1479 horsepower, giving it power to weight ratio of 26.9 horsepower per ton and maximum speed of 68 km per hour. It has fording capability of 2.25 meters. T-80B weights 42.5 tons and has GTD 1000 TF gas turbine engine with 1100 horsepower, giving it power to weight ratio of 25.8 horsepower per ton and maximum speed of 70 km per hour. It can cross water up to 5 meters deep. So Leopard 2 clearly goes faster, although max speed is a bit lower, it achieves speed faster since it has more power. Another thing to mention is that gas turbine engines waste more fuel than diesel engines. In comparison to diesel engines, gas turbine of T-80 wastes approximately 30% more fuel than diesel engines from Russia. But the advantage of Russian gas turbine engines is that Russian diesel engines were not even close to reaching the power of gas turbines. Not until T-14 Armata have diesel engines reached the power of gas turbines in Russia. But again, 
Leopard 2 still developed much more power, even more than gas turbine engines from Russia. And again, not a DLT-14 Armata was that power reached. Advantages of T-80's gas turbine on top of more power also include lower oil consumption, lower weight and better performance in low temperatures, but are much more expensive than diesel engines. Now, we will take a look at later variants, the Upper 2A4 from 1987, and T-80U from 1986. Firepower of Leopard 2A4 consists of the same gun, but new projectiles. At the time of its arrival, new DM-33 armor-piercing fin stabilized discarding Sabot was introduced. Sources vary for this projectile at around 550 to 600 mm penetration in 2 km, and it could fire already mentioned high-explosive anti-tank. T-80U got a new 2A46M1 gun, which was superior in every aspect to its predecessor. And it also got new projectiles to fire. It could fire 3BM32 APFSDS, also known as VANT, with 500mm certified penetration in 2km, which is not too bad compared to DM33, which came out two years later. Another projectile that came out relatively the same time was 3BM42 Mango, which has 450mm penetration at 2 km, but it is multicore and is reportedly better at penetrating composite armors, which could lead to it being better than any projectile at the time. It is also today most common expert projectile. TATU also has ability to fire 3 key 21 b high explosive anti-tank, with 520mm penetration, standard high explosive fragmentation and new reflex anti-tank guided missile. But now there is a difference between the two because Gunner for Leopard 2 got WBGX thermal imaging site which has over 3 km detection range and around 2 km identification range. While TATU still retained its passive infrared site which has average range of 1300 meters, depending on lighting conditions, it can drop or increase significantly, all depending on the light. But it is useless in fog, desert storm or any heavy weather conditions, making fire control system of Leopard 2A4 far superior. Armor protection of Leopard 2A4 was increased by implementation of titanium tungsten alloy in armor composition, and is now increased to 690mm against kinetic energy and 1290mm against high explosive anti-tank and turret, and 600mm against kinetic energy and 710mm against high explosive anti-tank on hull. T-80U, on the other hand, has a lot of changes. First of all is different armor composition, and second thing is implementation of new heavy explosive reactive armor, also known as Contact 5, which reduces incoming APFSDS projectiles power from 20 to 35%, and can completely destroy high explosive anti-tank projectiles, making armor protection of T-80U superior to Leopard 2A4. The armor protection is rated at 780mm against APFSDS and 1320mm against heat on turret and 730mm against kinetic energy and 1160mm against heat on hull, making it one of, if not the most protected tank when it was introduced. On top of that, sides were also equipped with contact 5 plates, making sides impenetrable to most high explosive anti tank projectiles of the time. Mobility of Leopard 2A4 also remained relatively unchanged compared to previous variants. T-80U's weight got increased to 46 tons, but the engine at the time remained the same with 1100 horsepower, so the power to weight ratio of T-80U was even lower at 24 horsepower per ton. But the things changed in 1990 when it received 1250 GTT 1250 gas turbine engine and the power to weight ratio increased to 27.2 horsepower per ton, which gave it more maneuverability. Now it's time to compare Leopard 2A5 from 1995 and T80 UK from 1991. Leopard 2A5 still has the same gun and same projectiles. T80 UK has the same gun as T80 U, but the new APF SDS was introduced the same year. 3BM46 Swinets with 600mm penetration at 2km, more or less the same as German DM33. Also, by the time Leopard 2A5 was introduced, 3BM42M Lekalo was introduced with 600 to 650 mm penetration at 2 km, which would make it superior to DM33. 
New 3VB Key 25 high explosive anti tank was introduced in 1988, which had 650mm penetration. High explosive fragmentation remains the same. ATGM got upgraded to 9M11 9M Invar, which is a tandem shaped projectile with 750mm penetration or 700mm penetration if struck by explosive reactive armor. The range also got increased to 5 km. More than any armor piercing thing stabilized discarding saber projectile could be fired, it giving T80 UK range advantage over its opponents. This time T80 was blessed with the thermal imaging system, Agava 2, with 2500 meters identification range, more than the one of Leopard 2A4. But the thing is that Leopard 2A5 got the commander's independent thermal viewer with second generation thermal imaging system, which has increased detection and identification range over first generation thermal, such as WBGX and Agava 2. But since Agava 2 is newer, it puts it somewhere in between those two. But the gunner of Leopard 2A4 still retains WBGX for generation thermal. Commander of T80 UK only has access to thermal on the monitor in front of him, which can give him a view through gunner's thermal, and unlike Leopard 2's gunner, gunner of T80 UK has a monitor which displays thermal image. For Leopard 2, thermal image is displayed in the main gun's sight reticle. Commander of Leopard 2A5 can also assess gunner's thermal view. It is also worth noting that although T80 UK does not have commander's independent thermal viewer, the commander still has his independent cupola with his own sight and passive infrared system. And since the first T80, commander had an ability to override the turret of the target or completely take control of firing process. Although not having his own thermal vision, passive infrared can still be good enough in some occasions, but still, thermal sight is superior. Protection of the both tanks increased. Leopard 2A5 got new composites and added arrowhead armor module onto its front. The protection is now rated at 940mm against kinetic energy and 1960mm against heat on turret and 620mm against kinetic energy and 750mm against heat on hull. T8 UK got new composites, making the armor on turret 850mm against kinetic energy and 1450mm against heat. Hull armor got increased to 780mm against kinetic energy and 1320mm against heat. It is also worth noting that all T80U tanks got upgraded with the same armor. And unlike Leopard 2A5, T80UK has Stora 1 soft kill active protection system, which has 90% chance to divert incoming laser guided and wire guided Cyclos ATGMs, which are the most common types. Due to the weight of Leopard 2A5 increasing to 60 tons, its power to weight ratio is reduced to 24.6 horsepower per ton. Mobility of T80 UK remains relatively unchanged compared to T80U from 1990. The latest variants we can compare today are Leopard 2A6 and T80 UA or UE. Leopard 2A6 this time got new L55 120mm gun and also new projectiles, the M53 APFSDS with 800mm penetration at 2km. Heat remained unchanged. T80 UA also got new gun. 125mm 2A46M4, an ability to fire more powerful APFSDS, Svinitz 1, which has 740mm penetration at 2 km. New 3VB Key 27 high explosive anti tank with triple charge warhead and 800mm penetration. Again, high explosive fragmentation remains the same. New Invar M ATGM was also introduced with tandem shape projectile and 900mm penetration. The ATUA received second generation thermal imaging system for the gunner, but again, no commander's independent thermal viewer for the commander. But it gave it ability to take away disadvantage Leopard 2A5 had in spotting range with its second generation CITV. Protection of both tanks hasn't changed. Change in mobility of Leopard 2 occurred again, since its wheels longer and heavier gun weight has increased to 62 tons, and power to weight ratio was once again reduced to 23.8 horsepower per ton. Now, combat performance of both tanks is sure to come by. Leopard 2 saw some action in Afghanistan. It proved well there, but it faced no major threats. Some Leopard 2s are used by Turkey in Syria, but aren't really operated in good fashion, and those are relatively old Leopard 2A4 export models, 
obsolete for modern use. T80 isn't on a good voice either, it saw action in Chechen War. It was never penetrated on the frontal armor, but the problem appeared when battalion of all T-80B tanks without explosive fillers in their area and no infantry or, or any other support was sent to occupy the city of Grozny, where they fell victim to RPGs fired from upper floors of tall buildings, and soon the press was filled with pictures of destroyed T-80 tanks, ruining its reputation, completely undeserved. On top of everything, most of Chechen fighters were former Soviet soldiers, and they knew exactly how to destroy those tanks. The losses of Turkish Leopard 2s and Russian T-80s in First Chechen War are a pure example how even the best tanks are useless if not used properly. Luckily, Russian military doctrines have completely changed since then, and new variants of T-80 tanks will never suffer such a shame that T-80B did in Grozny. While there are newer variants of both tanks, such as Leopard 2A7 Plus and T-80 BVM, not much is known about them. Known information include third-generation thermal imaging system for Leopard 2A7 and new relic explosive reactive armor for T-80 BVM to give it far more protection even against thunder machine projectiles, among other things. But certainly not enough information to draw any conclusions. That is it, thanks for watching. If you think I made a mistake somewhere, feel free to correct me in the comment section. Join Discord channel if you have some questions or just want to chat. As always, searches are in the description and I will see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.